Today, we push the limits of Bowser's Fury modding by testing what happens if you put green stars, flagpoles, and other items from Super Mario 3D World into Bowser's Fury. Let's start with green stars. If Mario stands near a green star that we've put into Bowser's Fury, you'll hear the green star make a sparkling sound, similar to what you'll hear if you stand near a cat shine. And just like when you're standing near a cat shine, if you stand near a green star, Mario will turn his head and face towards the green star. When you walk into the star, Mario can say excellent the way that he normally does when you collect a green star. Excellent. And after you collect this green star, the green star disappears just like normal. Your cat shine counter will still stay the same. If you save and reload the game, the green star will still show up as green, even though you've already collected it once, and normally in Super Mario 3D World, the star doesn't show up as green once you've collected it. Links work really similarly in Bowser's Fury and in Super Mario 3D World, so when you're modding Bowser's Fury, you can mod in enemies into the game that will spawn a green star when they're defeated, and this green star will behave just like normal if you collect this green star. <laughs> or, you could even make these enemies spawn a cat shine instead. And you might be wondering, what happens if you collect this cat shine instead of the cat shine that you're normally supposed to collect at the beginning of the game? Here's what happens. Wow! Look at all those cat shines! And what an interesting level name we have here! Oh, and look, it's the cutscene of Bowser being scared away by the light of the lighthouse. This cutscene looks just how I remember it. Completely normal. Nothing out of the ordinary with this camera angle at all, just Bowser being scared away by the lighthouse here. Interestingly, after this, your cat shine counter in the top left corner is still zero, even though we just collected a cat shine. I checked to see if Bowser was actually gone, and it looks like Bowser did really leave after we got this first cat shine. You might have also noticed that even though there are still water droplets running down the screen, the rain actually stopped after we got this added cat shine. It was raining before and it's not raining now. So I wanted to see what would happen if we tried to trigger Bowser waking up by going to the boat here. The music starts, but there's no lightning flash, no Bowser roar, and we don't see falling platforms and falling fire. It's a bit strange to move around the boat here and hear this Bowser music playing when Bowser isn't around. And none of these platforms are falling, it's, it's just, the music isn't very fitting here, I feel too safe for this music to be playing. Now that we've gotten this first cat shine that we added to the game, I wanted to see what would happen if we got the normal first cat shine in the game right now. What would happen if we got the cat shine that you're supposed to get now? The lighthouse lights up just like normal. We see this cutscene play out normally where the lighthouse lights up but there's normally a cutscene of Bowser running away here while this music is playing. But since Bowser has already run away, we're free to move around right now and that cutscene doesn't play. I wanted to head on top of the lighthouse since you can't normally get on top of this lighthouse this early in the game in this particular scene, and ground pounding the top part of the lighthouse doesn't give you anything here, even though a lot of lighthouses do give you an item when you ground pound on top of them, and after completing the prologue of the game, if you ground pound this same lighthouse, you do get an item. Getting this cat shine didn't bring us to the main game at Lake Labcat. We were still in this area and there's nothing that we can do. But when I reloaded the game, everything continued as normal because the game thought that we were at Lake Labcat after watching that cutscene and the game does save after you get this first cat shine. I wanted to see what would happen if you added checkpoint flags to Bowser's Fury, so let's put one in an easy to reach location near the start where it's also easy to die so we could test out how this works. When you touch the flag, it seems to work normally. You hear the sound effect and there's some confetti that comes out. Now, what happens if Mario dies? By default, Mario loses his coins like normal, and when he respawns, he's back at the regular respawn location, not at the checkpoint flag that we just touched. 
and the checkpoint flag has a Bowser flag instead of a Mario flag again, so it's like we didn't even reach the checkpoint flag. But at least you can use this flag to get back to full size if you've taken some damage. That part works normally. Even if you put multiple checkpoint flags near Bowser, the same thing happens. The flags can restore Mario back to full size if he's small, but if Mario dies, he respawns back at the start of the level, and he can use the checkpoint flags again when he comes back because it's as if we haven't even reached the checkpoint flags. By editing some of these links, you can make Mario start the game in the air like this instead of with his head in the ground, and I enjoyed seeing this. If you link Mario with one of these checkpoint flags, instead of this pile of dirt where he normally falls, the checkpoint flag here will have a star instead of an M symbol for Mario. And if you make Mario start the game here, it might look dangerous where Bowser's blasting fire at you right away. But Mario's actually very safe and very comfortable here. Bowser's fire can't hurt Mario while he's like this. I'm actually more worried about the flag hurting Mario than Bowser's fire hurting Mario here, to be completely honest. You'll also notice that the Bowser music isn't playing because we didn't pass over the part of the boat that is a trigger for normally starting the Bowser music. And at this exact spot right here, Bowser might look angry, but he's not going to shoot fire at Mario here. Maybe Bowser isn't attacking Mario because he tries to smell fear instead of using his vision. And this Mario here is a man that doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. And if Mario dies here, he responds back at the flag with the symbol of a star. But he's not invincible when his head isn't under the ground, so Mario does take some damage from the fire this time. But then he becomes so small that the fire passes right over his head. What a lucky Mario. You can hit the like button if that is a lucky Mario. Now what happens if you add a goal flagpole to Bowser's Fury, just like the ones you normally see at the end of a level in Super Mario 3D World? Let's see what happens. Mario heads across the ship, Bowser is furious, Mario is heading towards the cat shine, Mario realizes that there is a flagpole, Bowser is about to shoot his fire breath at Mario. What an intense moment! And Mario grabs the flag, Bowser breathes in for his fire attack, and... And yes, the game freezes here when you jump onto the flagpole. It might have looked like Bowser was about to attack us, it might have looked like Mario was about to go down the flag, but the game actually freezes here. You can hear some music still playing in the background, but the game is stuck in this position. A lot of you have been asking to see what a thick Bowser would look like after seeing my video on how big you could make Goombas in Super Mario 3D World, so here is a sneak peek at a thick Bowser. If you'd like to see more of what is possible in games through both regular gameplay and hacking, in this video there is obviously a lot of hacking, you're welcome to check out my other YouTube videos, you might find something that you enjoy. And you could also follow me on Twitter if you'd like to see little updates that aren't big enough to be yet made into their own video. So thank you so much for watching this video, wishing all of you a fantastic day, and take care everybody.